Hello everyone, my name is Chuck. You're watching Series Capes. This is a part of a series of videos on plant identification. Make sure to subscribe to get notified when the rest of the series is up, or you could check out this playlist which should appear somewhere in this corner or in the description down below. Continuing on the previous video on taxonomy, this episode is all about how to write scientific names or how to write botanical names, how to write Latin names, or how the binomial nomenclature works. So let's get started. So first off, you have to know about this concept called the binomial name. As the label implies, it is a name composed of two parts, hence binomial, and that's what we use for scientific names. When we say scientific name, we are referring to the binomial name and also the botanical name. So for the purposes of this video and pretty much everywhere else, those three terms are interchangeable. As you could imagine, there are so many rules, so many conventions when writing scientific names, so let us go through them one by one. Disclaimer, for the most part, I'm going to use the ICNCP convention, which is the International Code of Nomenclature for Cultivated Plants, especially since most of the plants that we collect, our succulents, are cultivated. As I mentioned earlier, there are so many rules, so many conventions, but only the details may vary. When you look up from division all the way down to species, the conventions are the same regardless of kingdom, but once you get down below species, things start to get different. So let's start with the basics. Binomial name, as the name implies, is composed of two parts. The first part would be the genus, the next part would be species. So when we say scientific name, botanical name, Latin name, whatever name, we're referring to the genus and species. All taxonomic ranks above species are composed of just one word. This is what we call a uninominal name. The genus name is always capitalized. The first letter is in uppercase, the rest is in lowercase. The species name is in lowercase, always. The scientific name or the genus and species, they should be italicized and in a different font from regular where possible. And if you're writing them, handwritten, then they should be underlined. Of course, the scientific name can be expanded into a trinomial. That's when you start getting below species. That's when you have subspecies, forms, cultivars, varieties. And it's here in the trinomial where things start to get different across conventions. For instance, in botany, subspecies is abbreviated to sub-SP or SPP. Nope. While in zoology, the subspecies is totally omitted. So for instance, modern humans would be Homo sapiens, subspecies sapiens, but we write them as Homo sapiens sapiens. The Bengal tiger would be Panthera tigris tigris, and the Siberian tiger would be Panthera tigris altaica. And as for an example in botany, the ripple jade would be Crassula arborescens subspecies angulatifolia. In scholarly text, the scientific name is followed by the surname, abbreviated in botany, of the scientists who first published the classification. When used with a common name, the scientific name follows in parentheses. For instance, the Mexican snowball, Echeveria elegans, forms low clumps. The scientific name should always be written in full except when there are several species of the same genus being listed. In this case, you could just spell out the first one completely, then the rest would be abbreviated. So for instance, Echeveria elegans, then E. colorata, E. polydonis, E. pallida, etc. The abbreviation SP is used when a specific name can't be determined or in case of plurals, it would be SPP. The abbreviation CF is used when the ID is not confirmed. Those were the general rules and here's some of the more specific rules set by the ICNCP. This next section is based on an abridged list compiled by Margaret Bischofberger with of course some simplification on my end. So thank you so much Margaret for laying the groundwork. Please check the description for the link to the original document prepared by Margaret. So this next section is about cultivars and hybrids. They have a slightly different naming convention which is set by ICNCP. So for the first one, we already know this, the binomial nomenclature. The first part would be the genus, the next part would be the cultivar name. Each word of the cultivar name must start with a capital letter or they should be capitalized. Exceptions to this rule are words after hyphens, unless they are proper nouns, conjunctions, and prepositions. So if you remember your English and grammar lessons, conjunctions should be and or but. 
and prepositions would be words such as in, of, under, upon, you know, all of those things. Hyphenated names could not be changed into single names or broken out into separate words unless it is a correction on the original name. So let's say something was published as dark ties instead of dark eyes, then that's when you publish a correction, a spelling correction, change it from dark dark eyes to dark eyes. Hmm, that's a good name for a cultivar. If a species, subspecies, or variety with a Latin name has been reclassified as a cultivar of another species, then this species name would be retained as a cultivar name. An example of this would be Echeveria glauca. It used to be a separate species of Echeveria glauca, but it has been since reclassified under Secunda, so it is now Echeveria secunda glauca. Cultivars that are thought to be hybrids don't need to have the X written in front of them. An example included by Margaret would be the Echeveria pagoda. Instead of writing it as Echeveria X pagoda, it should just be Echeveria pagoda. Cultivar names should be distinguished from taxonomic names, so that includes division all the way down to species. If the scientific name is written in italics, then the cultivar name should not be in italics. Cultivar names do not have to be existing words or something that exists in lexicon, vocabulary. It could be something that you just make up. So in this case, that means Echeveria sericicapates is valid. <clears throat> A cultivar name could not be duplicated within a genus and its hybrid genus. For instance, uh, an Echeveria and a Graptoveria, they, they both have Echeveria. I could not have Echeveria seriscapades and a Graptoveria seriscapades. Should be different. A cultivar name should be as short as practical and should not contain words that are too long that would be too hard to write or pronounce. A cultivar name should not be given the name of a living person unless they have consent. So, in my case, I could use Chuck Cirillo, but any other name, I might have to secure permission first. Using old, forgotten, or obsolete names to replace already established names should be avoided. Using trademark names should be avoided since this now falls down into intellectual property rights. This means that you have to check and make sure that the name is not protected in any country. And this might explain why some hybrids, some cultivars have different names in different countries. Maybe they're infringing on an existing right, an existing patent or property. Cultivar names in different languages should not be translated, but they can be transcribed or transliterated letter by letter. An example of this would be Pearl von Nuremberg. Am I saying it right? Nuremberg. 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 It may not be translated into Echeveria Pearl of Nuremberg, but it can be rewritten as Echeveria Pearl von Nuremberg. And here's a bunch of other examples. And speaking of other languages, transcriptions must be made with the following systems. So if you're using Mandarin Chinese or Korean or Japanese, this is what you should be using. Accents and diacritical marks are to be retained. Now, I am a native speaker of a language which only has one diacritical mark and that would be the tilde, no not the tilde, is it a tilde? Yeah, the tilde on top of the letter N, N which is similar to the Spanish way I guess. But here are a few more examples. As of the 1st of January 1959, ICNCP has put forth a bunch of new rules and here they are. The first one being is that they should not have any Latin names and this might get you wondering why some hybrids or cultivars have Latin sounding names. A very good example would be this Echeveria imbricata. Well, since the rule has only been established in the 1959, this one is actually a very old hybrid. An exception to this rule would be Latin words that have already been part of the regular lexicon. An example would be museum, Claudius, Africa, and a bunch of other words. The words form and variety and any of their abbreviations should not be used. You might be seeing a lot of hybrids and cultivars with the word form in the name. For example, white form, large form, blue form. These are all invalid. This also goes for form and variety in other languages. So something like forma would not be allowed. A name would not be accepted if it just merely exaggerates a merit of a cultivar and it is just merely descriptive. 
So an example of this would just be the name white or large white, maybe even just variegated or double red. But what about big red? I don't know. Another set of rules have been added in 1996, and these are the following. The cultivar status is to be indicated by using single quotation marks. You are not allowed to use double quotes, and the word cultivar, or its abbreviation CV, should not be used. So for instance, the Echeveria Mexican Giant, you're just going to write Echeveria Colorata Mexican Giant. You're no longer supposed to write Echeveria Colorata Cultivar or CV Mexican Giant. So again, the name must be enclosed in single quotes, not double quotes, and make sure to include the quotes. Don't forget the quotes. A cultivar name may not exceed 30 characters. What? This includes punctuation marks. Spaces and demarcation marks are not counted here. So, yeah. As of 1996, they published a list of words that should not be used, and these are the following. Cultivar, Grex, not sure what Grex is. Group, hybrid, maintenance, mixture, selection, sport, series, strain, improved, and transformed. Now, I remember when I got this plant, it was being sold with the label of Martin's Hybrid. This is wrong, of course, since the word hybrid is in there, and it should just be Martin. And continuing on that list, only the following punctuation marks are permitted. Apostrophe, comma, single exclamation mark, full stop, hyphen, forward slash, and backward slash. And the ampersand is to be translated as and, and the hash, hash sign for number has to become no, N-O, as in number, no dot. Cultivar names cannot be abbreviated nor expanded. So for instance, if you have a Roger Jones, you should not write it as R. Jones. And conversely, if you have a Dr. Butterfield, you should not fully write out the doctor. It should just be retaining the doctor, D-R, abbreviation. A cultivar name cannot contain the common name of the genus that it belongs to. An example would be stone crop. A cultivar name cannot be too similar to an existing name to avoid confusion. And finally, there's one more rule that has been added in 2004, and here it is. Cultivar names consisting solely of Arabic or Roman numerals are to be avoided. An example would be double X or letter K. What else? You know, number one, number two, 1,000, you should avoid them. But if they are just part of the name, say for instance, Seriscapades number one, that would work. Or maybe something like 10th wonder of Seriscapades, that should also work. But as long as the numeral is part of other words or a phrase of words, then that should work. So that's pretty much it on the rules on how to write scientific names and cultivar names. And this is based on ICNCP since we're dealing with hybrids mainly. This has been Seriscapedia. My name's Chuck. I'm doing my research so you don't have to. I'll see you in the next part. Bye.